Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. The Deacon of Real Estate. Alex, how are you doing today? Good, sir. I'm doing good, brother. Give me fist pump. We're, we're, we're pounding Boom. it out today. We're yeah, pounding it out. Yeah, yeah. Sun's uh, shining. The weather is getting better. Freaking spring is around the corner. I can't wait. It feels like it. Can't wait. Yeah, it, it feels does. like it. Hope we don't get that February blizzard like we tend to get slapped. Fingers with. crossed. Fingers crossed. So, uh, good, sir. What are we speaking about this afternoon? I want to teach the... Uh, the average investor, how to be lazy if you want to succeed. Look at that. You how want to talk that? about a catchphrase? All those couch potatoes, tune in. Start making money. Yep. Literally tune in because that's probably what you do if you're a couch potato is tune in. So. Absolutely. Be lazy if you want to succeed. That's what we're going to go with today. Um, I got that from a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that's a very well-known book. It's an, it's an easy read. It's a good book. It's written by Robert Kiyosaki. And he has a whole series off of that. Um, and we're just going to kind of pick bits and pieces of, of that saying today and how that relates to real estate investing. How's that sound, Adam? That sounds great to me. Oh, good. I'm glad um, it sounds good to you. So the first question would be, how does it relate to real estate investing? Well, how it relates to real estate <laughs> investing is the lazier you are, meaning, so we're going we're gonna to equate laziness to efficiency. Okay. So lazy means... How well can you focus on the 20%? There's a, there's a thing out there called the Pareto Principle. It's an 80-20 rule. It's actually a mathematician from, from Italy many eons ago had come up with this 80-20 rule where why is it that 20% of the population own 80% of all the wealth? You know, It's because that 20% focuses on the most important things. Mm-hmm. So that 20% is not checking their emails every five minutes. They're not responding to every email they're not checking their facebook page at work they're not being distracted by this going on here they're not distracted by that going on there because they're focused so what being lazy is in my opinion as far as what robert kiyosaki meant is surround yourself with with super bright people people that are smarter than you a good accountant a good attorney a good real estate agent, a good property manager. We talked about team building. We talked about it all the time because it's super critical. So unless you do that, just you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. So be late, be lazy. Surround yourself with people smarter than you who can advise you and take you in the right direction. Use your time focusing on what you do best, which whatever that may be. You might be good at the numbers side of things. You might not be good as a salesperson. Mm-hmm. So in that case, you need to partner up with someone who's maybe better at sales than you are. Right. right. Always right. strengthen your weaknesses. And, yeah. and then that way, and hopefully you're finding someone that your your strength is their weakness. And then that, that's the yes. ultimate partnership right there. So the lazier you are or the more efficient you are and the better you can manage people, manage your time, and focus – the more efficient you're going to be and the more successful you're going to be. So I feel like what you're saying is work smart, not hard. That is correct. That's exactly what I'm saying. You have to work smart, but you have to work hard too. Mm. That's where people lose it is when they read this book, and I've I've had a couple friends read this book, and it, I think completely they took it. People when, you know, and I'm no different, right? I, I, when I read a book, I get out of it something different than you get out of it. Right. Right. So I pull out maybe what I want to pull out of it. Mm-hmm. And I've had some friends read it, and they, they've kind of pulled out of it that being lazy meant being lazy. It really doesn't. There's no way on on this in this world and the way society is that you're going to be lazy and succeed. No, unless you're born into massive amounts of money. Right. That's, and that's, that's a select few. Right. And I wouldn't want to be in their shoes because I'd like to earn it. Right. It, it makes it more... You appreciate it more. It just, yeah, you absolutely appreciate it more. Appreciate it when you have it. You appreciate it when you don't have yes, it. And the, the fun is the journey trying to achieve whatever your goal mm-hmm. is. So how do we be lazy, Adam? That's what we're going to talk about. Well, you find someone to do all your <clears throat> crap work that you don't want to do. No. Um. <laughs> That's not a bad way of saying it, honestly. Because um, I, to be honest, I feel like I'm a fairly efficient person. Mm-hmm. But I am absolutely hard on myself and I know for sure I probably run every day at 40% efficiency and that sounds pretty low but I bet the average Americans at their job or whatever they're trying to do run less than that right you know 20% right. 
maybe 10%. And I agree. I think a, a big difference in real estate investing, investing in general, when you're in, when you're working for yourself, you realize how valuable your time is versus when you're on somebody else's dollar in a factory, in a warehouse, in a retail setting. You know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. you, you have to give more of yourself in this scenario to, to get any kind of uh, kickback. I think a good practice is, and I've done this before, is write down every 15 minutes what you did for like a week. Okay. So every 15 minutes you stop and you write down what did you do for that 15 minutes. Then I've done it before and at the end of the day I'm like, holy smokes, I got nothing done today. I literally got nothing done today. And I wrote down everything that I did. Because it's interruptions, I let the phone ring, I pick up the phone. And instead of blocking my time and saying, look, from 7.30 8.30 I am on this task mm-hmm. from eight thirty to eight to nine thirty. I'm on this task. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe I take a fifteen minute break, and then I'm on to this task. And that's the way you need to run your life because you want to get home and you want to enjoy your family and you want to have balance. Yes, and, and to have yeah. balance, you need structure. And you, and you really do. You it, there's to piggyback off that. I think there's a lot of us that we get into a thing where, like you said, every morning you wake up, check the MLS. You, you know, there's a morning routine that you have mm-hmm. before you get to the office, yeah. and we do our thing, then we kind of go home. And you realize how much more you get done in a day when you block your time off. You know, I'll wake up. I, I I just I know that if I can have dinner on the table, dishes done, things like that, I've had a really good day and I got everything done I needed to. You know, so I usually base it by that. <laughs> that's mm-hmm. that's success in my mind. If like yeah. I could cook for my family at the end of the day, mm-hmm. but if I didn't block off time, I would I would never hit that goal. And there's not a day out of the week that I would hit that goal. And I yes. ideally have to look at it with with my daughter with you know different things because my daughter's yeah. homeschooled so I can factor in my daughter with what I do work wise with what I do and I do everything is blocked off in hours so I, I absolutely see where, where you're coming from with that you know what I notice is when I have a really good efficient day it could be 10 hours of, of work at the end of the day I have more energy yes sir and it's the yep. days that I'm chasing my tail and I get nothing done it's when the days I just want to go home and literally zombie in front of the television. See, I think it's the adrenaline effect, right? It is. It, it's, it, success begets success. So mm-hmm. the more successful you are, the the more success comes to you. And it's just no different than the more efficient you are, the more you get done, it charges you up. Mm-hmm. You know? It's almost like one of those where, I mean, I hate to use this as an analogy, but it's almost like when you're hitting on the craps table. You know, I mean, you keep going, you keep going. You don't want to leave because you're feeling good. You know, when you're having one of those efficient days, you don't want to stop working because you're because everything's just going so good, so good. But true. that's where the balance is also necessary. There, very true. So, in, in order to be lazy, you really have to actually have a super work ethic. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, you always have to sprinkle in the balance side of it. You know, you just don't want to work 12, 14 hours a day. I don't know who, who wants to do that. I mean, there are there are a few people that. That it, it, that's just their life, you know? I used to. It's not worth it. Yeah. So anybody it's, it's out so there, it's not worth it. So what I do is, and I'm trying, and believe me, I am, like I told you, and I'm telling the listeners, I'm running at 40% efficiency. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Okay? So I want to get to a point where I'm running at 80%. How do I do that? This is how I'm going to uh, explain it to our listeners and to you, and I'm going to try to start practicing this, practicing this again as I've tried many, many, many times in the past. But one is block your time. You have to literally go through the whole week. If you probably spent, I've read some books where people spent like an hour or two. This guy would spend an hour or two every Sunday. Sunday evening was his hour or two. He would block his whole week out. And then that was it. He didn't have to think about where he was going next. He didn't have, he, he knew exactly where he was going. He got everything he needed to get done. And at the end of the week, he would review what he did that week so he could improve on it. Okay? Like self evaluation. I am so bad at that because I'm a guy that just likes to get up and do it. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm a reaction Mm -hmm. type of person. That's my DNA. So for me to step back and plan is very difficult. But (coughs) knowing what I know now and at the age I'm at, I need to make better use of my time. 
I'll, okay. I'll admit, I'm, I'm blocking your time, at least on my end. Yeah. If I don't block my time, I, I, that's where like my anxiety just takes me, mm-hmm. you know. And, and if even a little thing throat like kind of tweaks my schedule, yeah, that's where I, I kind of get all my, the rest of my day is just okay. And I think it's it, you know how we always talk about we're creatures of habit, yeah, we're total creatures of habit. And I think I'm noticing as I get older, I am absolutely that that creature so of habit. I'm literally writing this down because I want my listeners to know that I am absolutely far from perfect yep. and I run at a very low efficiency and I want to be as efficient as the Bill Gates and um, the Richard Bransons mm-hmm. of the world and the, you know I want to be that efficient right okay right. so block your time so as far as real estate's concerned if you're going to block time for real estate investing what's the number one thing a real estate investor has to do I hope you get this right because we talked about this all the time look for properties yeah good boy mm-hmm. Yeah, number See, one. I'm number one, block your time. Deal finding, okay. So that's either you're going to block your time either networking. Maybe that's on some social media sites where you're constantly um, just reading blogs and following people and listening and tweeting and whatever they do. I'm very bad at so- right. social media, so. But I'm starting to get good at, it and I'm seeing how. Um, how helpful it is, mm-hmm. you know, and and how much of a powerful tool it can be. It, it is modern day. So any sort of networking, whether it's you're going pressing the flesh at a at a, a, a meeting once a week, meaning you're just shaking hands and handing out your business card, mm-hmm. or you're doing it online. You want to network. You want to find those deals. So you want you need to block that time away to network. You need to block that time for what we called desktop analysis. Remember getting rich at home in your pajamas. Yep. That's if, sitting at home and analyzing properties mm-hmm. before you do anything. Because a bad use of your time is to get 10 properties that somebody sent to you and said, hey, these look like good deals. Jumping in your car, spending six hours driving through traffic, going through each house, getting home, and realizing that all 10 properties were a complete mm-hmm. waste of time. When you could spend, and once you get really good at it, I can do 10 properties in 10 minutes sometimes. Okay? Okay. It just depends how well I know the area. Mm-hmm. It might take me an hour to do 10 properties, but I can do that all online. And I whittle that 10 properties down to maybe zero, so I spend an hour instead of six. Right. Or I got the I'll, same result. <laughs> same result. Or I might do that little bit of research and whittle it down to two. And, again, I'm saving hours because we only have so many hours in a week and so many days in our lifetime. So what's the number one thing we're going to do is, is blocking your time as investors is networking and finding deals. There you go. Okay, how else we could block our time? In my opinion is seek out a mentor. And I get this question posed to me a lot. Well, how do you find a mentor? What do, what do I do to find... You don't never give up is what you do, okay? Because if you want to find somebody who's worth of you know being your mentor someone who's that good that person's not going to be available very often right right that person's going to be busy yeah absolutely like because their time's know, valuable yeah so if i wanted to meet with bill gates how hard do you think that would be probably pr- pretty, pretty freaking hard yeah. but, if, but you know what if maybe if i sent him a bill gates is probably that's that'd be almost like you know trying to meet the, the, someone that's untouchable but mm-hmm. someone of that caliber if you were there at their office every day and you brought them a coffee maybe someone somebody really important who you have access to somehow you send them a Christmas card you send them a letter every day hey I really want to hang out with you I want to know what you do what can I do to help you I, that's what I would do I would I would run all angles until I could get in front of that person and say look Mr. or Mrs. Super Successful Person, here's what I want to do. You tell me what you need me to do for you today. Do you need me to do your dry cleaning? Do you need me to wash your car? Right. Can, can I hang out with you for the day just to see what you do? And I just want to take some notes, and that's cool. And if you need me to go to the bathroom with you, I'll go in there and, and wipe your nose for you. Like, what do you need from me so I can help you, and you don't have to pay me anything? You mean pay your dues and earn your keep, so to speak? That's even better than that. that, that <laughs> is, that's an education you're getting from... A person who's mm-hmm. already done it mm-hmm. and are and is doing it. So getting a good mentor, you can get mentors online, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, let me be your mentor and just pay me fifty dollars an hour, and we'll talk about this or talk about that. 
those folks aren't doing it every day. If they were doing this every day and what you want to do successfully, they're not teaching it. Right. They're doing it. Right. Right? So find a good mentor. Block that time and you know, maybe spend 15 or 20 minutes trying to find that mentor. Who is that person? And whatever that looks like, just do it. Because a mentor can...